The Wolf Lake is a beautiful little lake about 40 kilometers outside of Princeton, British Columbia. I'm fishing with good friends Colin Wyron and Paul Adams, and this is one of their favorite little lakes in June. Although the weather hasn't been cooperative so far this spring, we do hope to get a little sunshine today. And this is an ideal lake because it is fairly small, only probably about 25 hectares, and it's ideal for our little frog boats. So it's the Wolf Lake. That's today as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you in part by Islander Reels, Precision Reels. Hardy and Gray's Fly Fishing Rods, Born to Fish. And the Freshwater Fishery Society of BC. Catch what you've been missing, Go Fish BC. Ah, well, they got into one. Oh, trying to get this guy over so you can see him. He's a, he's a healthy sized fish. Not gonna be that quick to get him in, I don't think. This looks to be that two pound range, maybe 18 inch. Man, oh man. Oh man, I gotta get this guy up. I gotta keep him away from the anchor rope. And of course, I didn't bring my net, which was just crazy. Should have brought it. I'll we'll see if we can get this guy in. Oh yeah, he's a nice sized fish, not too huge, just good size. Oh, there he is there. I'll hold him up before I let him go. He's a decent fish. Just unhooked the carotid in his mouth here. There he is there. Ah, nice little size, pound and a half, probably, you know, 16, 17 inch. And we'll give him a little helping hand and there he goes. So, there's the guy we got him on. Show everybody a little close up of him later, but nice little chromey. Got some orange slashes on them, bead head, and our normal gills for the top. So we're fishing in about six to eight feet of water right now. Fish have just started moving. We're seeing a little bit of chronomid activity. Like I said, the boys have picked a few fish up, so we'll keep working it and see how it turns out. On a big Be bomber. Big bomber, <laughs> yeah. What big gunmetal gray. Oh, okay, the old uh, anti-static bag chronomid. Yeah, just like... <laughs> yeah. And you put on a big one, like size 10, 12? You can. Right on. Well, you know, it's been a little, you know, just slow. We started off, we've only been out here for a couple hours, but it was fairly slow. We haven't seen many hatches coming off, that's the thing. If you come out in this kind of weather, we're having, it's fairly cool still. Water temperature is about 53 degrees. Temperature air, probably six. Yeah, it's fairly, fairly cool so far, but the sun is out. And right now we've got a bunch of little guys feeding. So uh, you guys gonna throat sample that guy? Pardon me? Gonna give him a throat sample? I think we might. Yeah, give him a throat sample, see what you can Haven't find. Haven't found much in him yet today, but. No, I don't think they've really cranked up yet. And when the fish aren't moving or the insects aren't hatching, you're gonna have a hard time. One thing to always remember, when you come to a new lake, if you're not with anybody, scout out the shoals, and of course, if you can find somebody or come up with some friends like I have, local knowledge is so important. They know where to set up, what shoals fish well, and where the fish are, and usually what to use. So I'll give that guy a throat sample and see what you got. About an hour ago, when we did have a throat sample of another fish, we saw a few chromies in there, but not very many. They really hadn't started feeding, so, well, that's a nice fish, Paul, yeah. Nice. Oh, <laughs> good release. 
<laughs> Good release. Nice. Perfect. And Colin, you got that guy on a big... Uh, big gunmetal gray with a red rib. Gunmetal gray with a red rib. So we've had a chromey, gunmetal gray with a red rib. Uh, big Al had a couple on his uh, sedge pattern. So it's a real variety right now. It's a crapshoot. But hopefully we'll get a little heat. And when we come back, some more great action from DeWolf Lake. Oh, here's another nice one. Well, the crazy thing is, I just went for a little tour of the lake. I went and buzzed around, checked the shoals. It is slightly tea-stained, but it's a real dark bottom to it. Oh, and then I came back, and the boys were anchored in about 12 feet still. Whoa, and this big, this big fish just jumped behind them. So I thought, well, that fish jumped in about 15 feet of water, so I moved out quite a bit further. I'm now anchored in about 20 feet, fishing to about 15 feet. And this guy first cast got out there, bang. And this is a nice fish. So I think there's a whole bunch of chronomy activity a little bit deeper today. This is a nice one though. A few feels to be pretty good size. Tried to strip them in right away. But again, first cast with the chronomy. I've been casting hard. I've been working for the past hour all along the shoal. You know that six to eight feet of water working all around and nothing. Chronomy's coming up, but nothing moving. Saw this big guy splash out a little deeper. So I came out, first cast in about 15 feet of water and bang. So just goes to show you, you have to check depth all the time. Look for activity. If you see activity, go where you see it and then adapt to the depth that it's at. And again, I've shown a lot of people that trick of what I do is I actually take my forceps, clank it, clip it onto my fly and then drop it down to check my depth. And that's how I I got this fly about, you know, a foot or two off the bottom. That's a quick way to check. Oh, nice fish. Another healthy rainbow. Oh yeah, nice fish. Whoa. If you come to DeWolf Lake, one thing I recommend, which I didn't bring, is a net. Now that's just crazy why I didn't bring a net. There it is, chronomid right in the top of his mouth. I'll turn him upside down, get the chronomid out. And there he is. It's a nice bow, you know, that pound, half, two pounds, probably 17. Whoa. <laughs> there he goes. Never squeeze the fish. If he wants to wiggle out, I just give him a little chuck and off he goes. So what we're going to do now, actually we're going to take you to the bench. I've got this little, what I call tricked out chromie. It's a pretty cool little fly. It is a chromie, but it's got some real neat modifications to it. So let's go to the bench, tie you up, tie you up the tricked out chromie. This week on the bench, we're going to tie you up the tricked out chromie. Now, chromie is a very well known chronomid that seems to work well when the fish are feeding in that upper three to four feet of water. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we'll use a Mustad C49S size 10 curved caddis, some 8 aught olive done thread to tie with, some large silver holographic tinsel for the body, some hot yellow ultra wire for the ribbing a 7 64th inch gold tungsten bead, some light olive stretch floss for the thorax, some white ostrich hurl for the gills, and some fluorescent orange fabric paint for the slashes. To start the fly off, I've tied on my thread, kept it near the eyelet, taken a small strand of my white ostrich hurl, and again I'm going to tie it in near the eyelet, and then wrapping in front of my thread, but still behind the eye, take about three or four wraps and tie it off. This will be our gills. I've whip finished my thread off and actually put my bead up and remember when you put your tungsten bead on make sure the big end or the fatter end goes towards your gills because it'll slide up a little further and cover the gills. Retied on my thread to the back of the hook and now I'm going to tie in my gold or my yellow wire. Gold or yellow even some orange wire works fine. All we're trying to do is match this wire with the slashes we'll put on the fly a little later. So tie that in the rear of the hook. Once the wire is tied in at the back of the hook, I'm going to take a strand of our holographic tinsel, going to tie it in at the rear of the hook, and then wrap it forward about uh, you know two thirds up the hook to form the body.
Now that the body's tied in, take our wire that we've had sitting off the back, and this is our, our gold or yellow wire. And we're going to take about eh, five to six turns to form the rib on the fly. Now that the body's tied in, we're going to take some light olive stretch floss and we'll tie it in for the thorax. And again, when you tie this material in, just catch a piece of it on the corner and then pull it nice and tight because we want this thorax and this stretch floss to stay fairly thin and just build it up a little bit tapered towards the bead and then we'll tie it off. To finish the fly off, we're going to take our whip finisher and whip finish right behind the bead. And then cut off your thread. And then what we're going to do is turn the fly on an angle. Turn it on its side, make sure it's nice and flat, directly flush and uh, parallel with your tabletop. And put on our orange slashes using a bodkin or a needle and our orange fluorescent orange fabric paint. So there it is, the tricked out chromie. Again, original patterns are a great starting point. But remember, when you trick something out, you can make it that much more effective. Just want to quickly review the recommended setup. Again, I have my dry line. I've got a 10 foot rod that I like to use in lakes for casting. On my leader, I've got a fills bob. Now these are great bobs because what you do is they just pop release when you catch a fish. So all you do is you take the little, little plastic piece they give you, wrap your line into a little loop and then tuck it in. And whenever you catch a fish, that'll just pop and clear so you can actually fish, you know, 15, 20 feet of water and have that indicator slide all the way down to your hook. Then I've measured out and down to uh, where my hook is. And always, as always, I like to use a swivel. A lot of people put a small little microwave on there. Again, a swivel accomplishes a bunch of different things. It allows the fly line and the fly not to tangle and turn, and you never have to worry about your line. And it gives you the weight, just enough weight to get that fly down in a hurry, especially when you have windy, choppy conditions. From that, again, I've only got another foot, foot and a bit, down to my tricked out chromie, which we showed you on the bench. And there it is there. And again, what we're doing is, I don't throw sample a whole lot of fish because I have these other guys with me today. You know, uh, Paul and, uh, and Colin came out. They like to do a lot of throw samples. Throughout the day, and this goes with the recommended setup, is try to understand how to use a throat pump, or they call it a stomach pump, but it's actually a throat pump properly because it'll really improve your day. We saw some chromies on some, in some fish earlier, and I put out my little chromie, and it seems to be working. So there's a recommended setup for you. Again. Personal preference on the rod, 10 footers, help you cast a little bit further. Whoa, 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 little guy. Whoa, see the, oh, big air, you know. Whoa, geez, these are active fish in here. Just great fighting fish. And again, oh, big air. You know, not a huge fish by any means, but great air time. And again, that's the secret, you know, we've been working those shoals all day, working them hard for about three hours, and we picked up a couple of fish, but until we saw that big one jump out a little deeper, and essentially, as you can see, we're fishing almost in the middle of the lake. I mean, this lake isn't that deep, it's probably only 30, 40 feet on its max, and we're out fishing 15 feet, 12 feet of water, because it is a very, very gradual shoal all the way up from the middle of the lake, it comes up nice and gradually and then up onto the shoal. And we're just fishing off the drop, essentially that 15 feet of water. And here's this guy, another nice one. Not huge, just a nice, nice size. I wet my hand. Okay, let's get this guy up, turn him upside down. There's a chromie right on the top of the lip. There he is there. Oh, I don't like to hold him, as I always say. 
And that's one thing to tell your kids, you know, a lot of people, they'll feel the fish wiggle and they'll grab them and squeeze them and put them towards you. If they want to go as long as they're over the water, just let them go. If they're going to hit the water, splash down, no big deal. You're going to hurt them a lot more if you take off that slime, especially off the skin. You don't want to take any of that slime off, so let them go. You might look like a dork, but it's okay. <laughs> okay, what I'm doing is I've got a bunch of little marks on my line here, the depth I was at, and I know I was about the fourth little kinkle down here, so I'm about here on my line. So there's different ways, and again, that's what I'm doing with my fills bob, very easy, just crease it in. If you don't have a good indication, just get the pliers on, put it on your hook, and go down. And if your indicator is real near the top of the water, you know when you take your pliers off, your fly is going to be down there too. So again, it's a real good trick to get that fly down there quick. So let's get it out there. Seems like the action's picking up. You know, it's kind of kind of midday, two to three in the afternoon, and starting to come on. Fishing deep water though. You know, everybody says the fish always come into the grocery store, which is at eight to ten feet. But a lot of times, if the chronomids are coming up in deeper water, go where the feet is, and you'll get the fish. What a lot of people don't understand about chronomitting, or there's different techniques you can use. One of the best ways that I like to do it is take advantage of the wind. And when me and Brian Chan did a whole bunch of different videos, we always stress the fact that you want to utilize the wind to help action on your fly, to give that fly the action you need. A lot of people cast directly downwind and let the fly sit, which is fine in the ways, and it'll bounce to give that fly some action. But the best way is cast across the seam. So essentially, I'm casting perpendicular, not parallel, but perpendicular to the wind. So your flow, your indicator will go start essentially beside your boat, and it'll work with that wind all the way down the lake, and you cover all that water. Compared to casting behind the boat, directly behind it, sure you're going to work that little patch of water, but your fly is just going to be sitting there working one area. When you cast a wind drift, you're essentially covering a huge amount of water, and that's what you need when you want to catch fish. I moved, I changed spots, so I'm going to do the trick. I'm going to take my forceps, hook them onto my fly, and be very careful, make sure you crimp them on there before you drop it down. I'm just going to drop it down and check my depth. So what I'm looking for is there's my indicator there, so that's where it hit. So there's the bottom. So I am fishing about a foot too deep. So what I'm going to do now is adjust my indicator. So just adjust it, pop it, pull it down about a foot, crimp it on again, drop it down. If I didn't tangle my line here, hook the other rod. Go back down, and let's see. Yep, there's the indicator right where the thing hooked. Ah, oh, we're dredging, look it. We're up anchored. That's the problem, <laughs> we're drifting. <laughs> we got two, uh, two boats going here on this little anchor system and it's not quite cutting it. But that's a good trick that you want to use. Put the forceps on your fly, drop them down, you got a quick depth. Now we're gonna have to move again because we're drifting. We've been waiting all day for the hatch to come off or the weather to get better. It finally has. It's probably about 4, 4.30 in the afternoon. And I'm fishing deep water. I'm trying to fish 20 feet. I have my indicator right down. I've got a leech on because they're not really hitting chronomids. And there's a lot of smaller fish moving right now. So I'm just going to persevere and hopefully some of these bigger ones will come off. But it is good action, it's still a lot of fun. How I'm fishing with the indicator is fairly simple. I'm allowing my fly to sink down quite a bit, you know, obviously down to the indicator depth, about 15 feet. I'm allowing the fly to come back or towards me with the, uh, with the wind. Always once in a while, is just give it a couple little, couple little movement, just a couple little tweaks. And all that's gonna do is give that fly just a little movement once in a while. It's still moving with the wind, but you wanna jerk it every once in a while. Just give it that, Give it that little, just a little twitch. And a lot of times, right after you give it that twitch, the fish will hit. So you gotta watch that indicator. Fish on. Finally. We're just starting to get some fish moving. <laughs> and it's being tough. It's dead calm. Really tough fishing, but I'm able to get them. And here's this guy. 
Good little scrapper. So a lot of the smaller guys moving right now. Hopefully these bigger guys will start coming into the shoals as the, uh, as the hatch comes on a bit. But I still haven't been able to go with a chronomet. I still have to use a leech because there's just not enough chronomets coming off. Alright, let's get this guy in. He's just a little guy. Let's flip him upside down. One thing I have to do is bring my net next time. It's a lead train them all. There he is. A little guy. Just one little guy. Let him go. Oh, looks like the boys are heading in. Colin and Paul have had enough of the day. You know, it was a pretty tough day today. Got a few fish. It was, uh, again, low pressure systems. I can't stress it enough. If you're in a low pressure system, and I mean by barometric pressure, if it's below 100 or it's cruising down, you're going to have tough fishing. But stay with it. We had a pretty good day. The nice thing about coming out with Paul is he is a master chef, and he always makes my favorite peppercorn steak. So that's where we're going right now. I'm very happy to reel up. It's dinner time. Let's go and have a pepper steak. Well, boys, it was a pretty tough day again. Every time I come and see you guys, I seem to hit the bad weather. Beautiful lakes, but the bad weather. It's amazing. Every time you come to town, you bring that bad weather with you. I know. The barometer drops and uh, we have a tough time. Just the way fishing is. Anyways, I always have a blast fishing with you guys. But here's a nice thing. Paul's a master chef. We're going to cook these peppercorn steaks up. And this is a very cool thing. What is this? This is the Bambuster, developed by Colin and his brother, SBC Firemaster. Yeah. This, this product allows you to have a fire when there's a campfire ban in the bush. When the wood is wet, when it's raining out, like we've had for the last couple of days, excellent thing to have around, handy, lets your kids roast some marshmallows, wieners, or we can do peppercorn steak. Fantastic. So besides this great product that you have here, you got another great product right up there. And what do you call that? Again, this is a Be Free, Get Lost Wuffs. Colin, his family, developed this product. Amazing thing to have around your camp, around your home. Keeps the wasps away. They're territorial. They, yeah. they stay away and from And if it ever gets warm enough that a wasp can actually come out of the ground, <laughs> it'll be really handy. It never and does I, when you're here with No, us, that's right. I know it'll work. But anyways, you know what? I always have fun with you guys. We always have a blast. When you're on the water, take care. Conserve the waters, because eventually I am going to hit it good with you guys. And we'll see you next time when we take a sport fishing on the fly. Ching, ching, boys. Want more information? Visit us at sfotf.ca. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.